you know, there was all these data numbers coming in from, you know, what was it Counterpoint and and IDC Canalis and Alice and Alice and blah, blah, blah. Apple's China numbers were down 197 percent from a year ago, and their overall iPhone market was shrinking. It was doomsday. This was set up to be the worst Apple earnings ever, basically. So anything that was a beat was going to be good. But it, you know, I just kind of kind of read back my 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 tweet here because i basically said you know it's like the arts and sciences i have to be candid when i it's like i was expecting bad too but i actually said you know i just want to read this i said something like well played but i basically said i want to read it back the apple beat was against really low expectations so this is a puts and takes comment first so well played by apple they basically they completely bought into it. They ate it. They leaked their next thing. They made everybody think that they were in even worse shape than they were. They came the whole thing perfectly, all time low expectations. And then they beat again, they beat a crappy number. Nobody remembers that because people forget that they got, you know, there was a crappy guy. They give another single digit growth guide, by the way. I want to remind that, get that on the record now. They're guiding the single digit growth. Um, Apple is a single digit growth company. And then by the way, their iPhone number was down 10%, but yet everybody was freaking celebrating this. Like talk about being able to get the market to completely not pay attention. Somebody sent me a tweet, this guy, Future Investors, it was very funny here. Uh, he tweeted me on it this morning. It was basically a comment of like, there was a there was a picture of the, um, the uh, Vision Pro at the bottom of the ocean rotting there was a picture of the iPhone drowning, and there was a picture of an investor giving a hug to a $110 billion buyback. And that's all they could see is the investor looking at the buyback. I mean, look, that Pat, what did you tweet? Something along the lines of half a Qualcomm, four HPs. Um, it was like something like what the they Intel, could buy. Almost, almost an entire Intel. Yeah. Almost an entire Intel with the money they're going to spend in buyback. But, you know, look. They beat on services, which is the high growth, it's a high margin part. Their other products revenue missed, their iPad revenue missed, their Mac revenue beat a pretty low expectation, but it beat their iPhone number missed, but their revenue beat. So it's kind of like you go across the business, nothing's actually doing particularly well. Um, you know, he did give some like kind of reinvigoration to the Vision Pro, said enterprises are buying at a faster rate. I, I just kind of, you know, with that particular thing, Pat. Apple's always been a buzz company. There was like a, the, the buzz of the Vision Pro lasted two weeks. It was two weeks of, you know, people getting out of their cyber trucks, wearing their Vision Pros and going into Starbucks and eating while they were wearing their Vision Pros. I still believe in the technology. I still think they've iterated on what HoloLens and Google Glass and everyone did. And they've made something that I think is more immersive, more enjoyable, more usable. I mean, you watch movies on it. It's pretty cool. but like. It still feels like a neck injury waiting to happen. It's too big. It's too bulky. It's too much battery hog. It, it's too much to carry around. It's not very usable. It's not very comfortable. And so will they get it right eventually? Yeah, they beta, they're beta. they beta building a developer ecosystem in real time. And people that are, you know, the, the odd millions of people that are willing to buy anything Apple puts out are buying what Apple puts out. They should have built the car. There would have been a few million people to buy that too. Um, but having said that, I think they're, they're still more iterative than innovative and they're still the best innovation they have is financial and in, in engineering innovation. They are innovating by breaking all kinds of records, like spending more money on a stock buyback than any company in history by a long shot. And by the way, the market loves it. So now what is Apple? It's a single digit percent growing value stock with a huge buyback program and, and, and a dividend. I mean, and by the way, their stuff's fine. I like it. Like I use their phone. It's good. It's cool. So they're I have kind a, of the 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 IBM of consumer devices and services. But there was a point, Pat, where IBM was IBM, and they were the Apple that IBM is. And what do I mean by that? There was a there was a window when IBM was the most innovative company on the planet, and then there was a window where IBM was still talked about as the most innovative company on the planet, but they were really losing that ground. And are we in that moment right now? Like, what are they doing that is truly breakthrough? And and by the way, I I just got to say this. I know Tim Cook has done a good job of managing the ship, but don't you think Steve Jobs is somewhere rolling over in his grave that the best use of $110 billion was that they were going to use it for a buyback? Like, 
Like, can you imagine that that was what he envisioned the future of this company being? And I will say one other thing is Apple with its amazing war chest and wonderfully managed balance sheet could and should go buy all kinds of different innovators and they can't. Yeah. Now, having said that, they should take a play from Satya Nadella and just do what he's doing and go buy talent and have the talent leave the company. So those companies kind of capitulate and then bring the innovation with them or use licensing agreements or different, you know, there's different ways to skin that particular cat. Um, but I mean, 110 billion, you could, like you said, buy a lot of, of innovation and a lot of revenue growth. Um, you know, I, I don't know, Pat, but like I said, it was a, it was an interesting quarter. Apple always gives us something to be entertained by. Yeah, I kind of look at this through three different lenses. You know, one is the what are the investors thinking? Number two is what are the real numbers of how how are products selling year over year? And then this kind of this overall uh, where the company uh, is headed. They 100% had a disaster quarter. I mean, revenue is off 4%, iPhone off 10% percent ipad off 17 percent wearables off 10 percent america's off a point greater china eight points japan 13 percent rest of asia pacific off 17 uh, percent to their credit mac was up four percent services up 14 percent but let's peel the onion on that on the mac side they're doing blowout discounting on on m1 uh, macbook airs I totally get that. And there's also probably some boost from uh, M3s. Um, and uh, so that 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 made sense. Services at 14% is basically selling backup, Apple Plus, um, fitness stuff. Um, and don't forget, Google search deal gets plopped in there as well. What does the future of the app store look like with the deconstruction that's starting in in Europe and will likely uh, make its way to everybody else? So from a number standpoint, it was a disaster. Uh, from an investor standpoint, you boost your dividend and you boost buybacks. You're basically reducing the float when you do the buyback. That means there's going to be less open shares. Then on a per share basis, that means that it's going to go up. So it that's went, just it math. It was precipitous. Yeah. Friend. And then you look at the dividend increase, uh, and that also goes into the magic spreadsheet of, of net cash and the stock goes up. So that was, I mean, Apple is very, I got to hand it to them, very creative. They are a super creative, innovative company uh, on the spreadsheet and, uh, uh, and this quarter. Now, mac macro, Here's the deal. They're behind uh, in AI on the device. They're, they've never had a cloud capability beyond backup and storage, um, but they never have to be first to, to do what they need uh, to do. I think they're gonna lean in heavily in, in on device with absolutely no timidity, like I've seen, quite frankly, in the Windows world, right? The Windows world is all about Hey, look at this co-pilot uh, in the cloud, uh, and yeah, we're going to build a capability uh, on you know on the device itself. But come WWDC, it's going to be all on device all the time. And I believe that Apple is 100% behind Microsoft uh, on this because it's not just them showing up with one mixture of experts model. You need to have like 20, 30. 40, 50 different tuned models to do different stuff. And they need to tie it all together between iPhone, Mac, and whatever they're doing in the cloud. Siri, you know, is 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 laughable uh, aside from weather and reminder and wake me up. Uh, so yeah, I don't I don't think they're down and out or down for the count or or anything like that. It's just they're any really precarious position right now it ain't over a company with a balance sheet like that could do nothing and stick around for a really 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 long time yeah. so just just like i said the uh you know i 
we like to be hard on it because it's Apple. So, you know, it's easy to be happy. But if you're if you're looking for innovation, you know, everything they're doing is mostly financial engineering. <laughs> so that's the that's the the question. You know, I was asked yesterday, well, is this a growth company? I mean, I don't know. Is a single I guess it, it Pat, philosophically speaking, um, one percent is a growth company, but I don't think it's what people really think about when they think about growth. So that's the 